Hi, this is the Ridge Runner with another Pine Home Primitive Skills uh, moment here. Uh, I'm here at a, well, I'm here at an undisclosed location. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a, uh, a new knife I just got a hold of. Now, as you recall, one of my last knife reviews was with the, the Russell Green River, um, the Hunter. And uh, I told you I was going to bring you another one. Now, the Russell Green River seems to have two models that they call their sheath models. These knives that would fit on a belt. They were more of a belt knife than it is. They're something you'd use in the, in the kitchen or whatever. Um, and the one we're going to talk about today is literally called their sheath model. It's the 2212 Russell Green River Works uh, sheath. <laughs> um, that's the way it's listed anyway. But here it is right here. And uh, you know, it comes with a... This is the protective casing that comes with it. Also a really good way to you know, keep this is if you're going to make a sheath, this is a great thing to use for your baseline for how wide you need your sheath to be. And you can actually stitch it in there if you really wanted to. Anyway, I'm going to set that aside. We're going to talk a little bit about this knife. Now, like the other one, it has this nice grippy handle. I'll start at the, work, at the, at the working end and work to the business end. It has this nice grippy uh, pattern pressed into it. I'm quite sure it's pressed into it. Um, it's full tang, as you can see, and uh, quite comfortable in the hand. I mean, it, it's uh, you know not hard to be covered. Simple. It's a simple handle. Um, it's got two brass rivets. These are those set rivets. You know the cutler's rivets. Um, if you want to replace them, replace the nut, the handles, they're actually not hard to pop off if you need to. Now, this one here, the sheath model, is obviously a short version of the Butcher. Now, I've got a Mora number two right here to give you an idea of what the length is on it. And it's about a little bit longer than the basic Mora. And you can see that's, a, you know, and... Um, that's you know that's that, that's it's but basically working wise not much different. Um, you notice that unlike the Mora, it has a flat grind like the other knife, uh, the, just like the Hunter, and it's it it almost goes to zero. I don't know if you can see that, but it is razor sharp. I mean very sharp. I'm again very impressed with the the quality of a factory edge on a knife like this. Um, some things I don't like about it, um, before I go too much further, I don't like this end here. It just abruptly ends. It's almost like there was more to it and then somebody just went and cut the whole thing off, steel and handle all together. Now, I mean, that's forgivable on a knife that you spend $16 on, um, especially a knife with a, of high carbon steel made in the USA. Uh, by a company that's been around for well over 200 years. The, this has been a very popular knife pattern to carry in the Old West and when we in, you know, during uh, the mount, uh, for mountain men or for, uh, you know, settlers or whatever. And uh, one of the things you got to understand about knives prior to a certain date, unless they were custom made for somebody, when you bought a knife off, knife off the rack, a knife was a knife was a knife. There were like a couple of patterns that people would have that would allow you to, that, that they, that, and you'd take it into the kitchen or you'd make a sheath for it and carry it on your belt. And sometimes it would go bounce back and forth between the two. Um, but by and large, uh, when you bought a knife, it was just a knife that you would do double duty with. Um, the thickness on these blades uh, is, is actually quite nice. I, I've said in other videos, I'm not a big fan of these thick knives um, that have come out lately, especially in a small working knife like this, because you're not batoning with this. I mean, you shouldn't be anyway. This is not a survival knife. I mean, it is a great knife for bushcraft and for use in survival for a knife-like function. But, you know, it's got a thin enough blade that... You know, I mean, if I was splitting up some kindling and I wanted to tap my way through the corner of a log or whatever, and you know, split off a, a chunk, you know, maybe the size the, the size of this here or whatever, yeah, I'd be all right with that. But you know, I'm not splitting logs with it. Nor do I've got an axe for that. 
Um, I put it in the same category as my Brusletto. You know, it's a cutting knife. And uh, I'll tell you, they came, this is a $95 to $100 knife. Okay? This is a $16 knife, and they have an equal edge in terms of sharpness. I mean, the only thing I can say is this Brusletto is like five years old, and it still has a beautiful edge, and I've done nothing more than strop it. I think this will be the same way, though. Um, things I don't like about it, besides the, the, the handle, it's got a four and a half inch blade. I prefer a five. That's nitpicky. So, basically, what we'd what I'd like to say is that this is a uh, This would be a great field knife for somebody, and it'd be a great hunting knife, and it'd be good for skinning specifically. It's got this rounded, uh, rounded uh, blade to it. That's not. It does have enough of a point to do some point work with, but it's not a sticking blade. And uh, if you were to, I'm going to do a shout out to Dave Canterbury here because he was talking about it in one of his videos where he talks about how a knife's function, uh, a, a knife's blade shape lends to its function. Like in this case, what this allows you to do is this is a skinner. This is a butcher's knife in the shape. It allows you to get up underneath that skin and that hump right there allows you to, un it allows the, to keep the point from cutting into the, the, the meat or into the skin and allows you to unzip it while keeping uh, keeping the edge perpendicular to it so that it'll, it'll cut nicely. Um, that That's that's what this is for. Now, I can also carve trap triggers with it and whatnot, but this is a hunting knife. And uh, even though it looks so simple and doesn't look like all the modern, what would, a modern thought of what a hunting knife should look like, buck one, you know, a buck special or whatever is what people think about when you say hunting knife. But this is a hunting knife for somebody who really knows what they're doing with it, you know, and when they really want a knife that does a job. Things I will do. First, like you'll see in another video, when I, uh, is, with, is I'm going to force a patina on this. This is high carbon steel. It will rust. I will round off this because it's just uncomfortable. And especially if I'm using it and I have to adjust my hand around on it, that step digs in a little bit. So I'm going to change that. But for $16 or $17, I mean, there's there's some change between $16 and $17 there. Again, Russell Green River knives, they're, they're hard to beat. So my view is if you want to go on Amazon and pick one of these things up or go through uh, Crazy Crow or a bunch of other comp companies that sell these, do get them. Um, and uh, a lot of them have custom she sheaths. So Crazy Crow specifically has sheaths you can buy to that, that will fit these knives. And, of course, there's also patterns you can make your own. But, long and short, I, I, I've talked a lot about these knives already, so I don't need to go through every detail again. But, this is it. This is the Green River uh, Model 2212 sheath. So, anyway, get one, and I highly recommend it. This is the Ridge Runner. Well, before I do that, please like and subscribe, and visit us at woodlandsurvival.com, both on the uh, both on the web, our website, and on Facebook. So, like and subscribe. You have a good day. This is the Ridge Runner signing off.